All right, so we record these on Sunday night, just so you know. As of us recording this, we have no idea if Stetson Bennett is a Heisman finalist, but we feel pretty darn good about his chances of being in New York for the Heisman ceremony. I don't think he'll win it, but we're going to show you why he deserves to be there. I'm Dan Young, that's Brent Rollins. We co-host Film Don't Lie here from UGASports.com. Please subscribe to us here on YouTube or like our Facebook page where you watch us, and then you can see all of our content moving forward, including previews of Georgia and Ohio State, recaps of Georgia in the postseason. Uh, we're presented by Jittery Joe's, Athens' favorite coffee. That's not their tagline. I kind of made it that because it's my favorite <laughs> coffee. So Dane's favorite coffee, and Dane likes Athens a lot too. Third person, uh, you can find better things than that. Then go over to jitteryjoes.com and just see all that they have. It's a great holiday gift for the coffee lover or Athens lover uh, in your life. All right, Brent, let's talk about some Stetson Bennett here because the first half, particularly second quarter, because he didn't touch the ball much in the first quarter, particularly second quarter in the SEC championship, just marvelous. It's as good as he's played all year. This is best first best passing grade since UAB. Since the start he had against UAB, the very first start that he got last year where he threw for five touchdowns. Like it's just it's a thing now where and we've commented on this throughout the season where we think he kind of is in like coast mode, you know, just cruise cruise mode for certain games. And then it just all right, I'm going to shift it into gear and really go in these bigger games. And it's it's real now. It's, you know, big game stat, whatever, you know, big game Bennett, however you want to term it, it's a thing now. So this play that we're starting with, fourth time, I believe, that he's touched the football is this play, and it's almost at the end of the first quarter because it was a quick drive, and then LSU possessed the heck out of the ball but in the first quarter. Stetson Bennett gets back on the field. George has already got seven points from the Christopher Smith block and return. Uh, where the field goal block, he didn't block it, he returned it. That's our play of the game. It's also on our YouTube channel. Here we go. This is, uh, I, I knew that you were going to pick this play. I knew this was right in your heart of get Stetson on the move and give him some options. Well, and the interesting part about the play is, is as I'm watching it, because I'm their backs are to me as I'm watching this, I'm my first thought was dump it to Darnell, dump it to Darnell, because I see that everybody, for the most part, there's guys near them. And Darnell is just standing there, you know, wide arse open. But the throw he makes here and the, you know, the revolutions he puts on the football in here and the spot that he puts it in, phenomenal. Just great throw. On the run, accurate, hips, whipped his hips really well and just put on it. And this is – and we're going to kind of show the first three plays of this drive, but I thought this was how the game would start. I thought their first drive of the game would look more like this, but it was run, run, pass, punt. And, you know, this is when, when they are, I think when they are rolling, this is a good rhythm play for him. And just great pass the lad, accurate ball on the run, him being really, really good. So he ends up here and you see all the options he has. He can go to Bowers, who's going to end up kind of in the um, where LSU's logo is. He ends up going to McConkey, which, I mean, it's just a powerful throw. And like I, there, I don't think I don't hear anyone question his arm strength anymore. But the fact that that was a thing that happened is pretty wild now. <laughs> it is when you think about it. Let's watch it. It's a great play. And look at the attention that Bowers commands too. Bowers and Stetson, because Stetson is a runner. Like all that that play that play, and I've harped on this for to no end for them to run this type of play consistently. They just it, – it's a threat to the defense, and it works well for their offense. From a set-the-tone standpoint, I can't let this play go by without saying, Broderick Jones, you took the guy and you showed him, I'm here to work, buddy, Harold Perkins. I've seen what you can do. Hello. Like, yeah, he got in his way. He did not let him by, and then he got some help after it. Just beautiful. Because Harold Perkins can cause problems over there. Yep, and especially when you know you're going, the play's going away from you. I think it was, you know, Bro Broderick actually, from a pass block standpoint, this may have been one of his, I think it was his lowest pass block grade of the season. Eventually allowed like four pressures in the game. But, and run block grade was the best on the team. But still, he's been, it, this was, he had more 
QB pressures allowed in this game than he had all, all season almost. So it's just been phenomenal as a pass pro guy. Georgia gets the first down, next play. Next play. Basically same thing, different formation, a little bit different personnel. Except we block the guy, we block the guy and just watch the LBs. The LBs on this play, like 30's playing run, hardcore. He's kind of, you know, the one on the left. Yeah. And then 23, who's was actually really he played played solid and is a good linebacker, but just gets sucked into the fake. And you just look at how bunched they are here and then the space that's here. Mm-hmm. Duh. <laughs> That's Perkins that Bowers just runs by because yep. he, he, that his, it's not his job to run with Bowers there. At least not in this play. But what was interesting is that there were multiple plays and a lot of them that he it, it what was his job to stick with Bowers, even even when he's lined up in the slot. But again, for first play of the drive, play action, get him on the move. Next play, play action, hit your guy in the middle of the field. Now you're rolling. And I just quickly want to shout every time this happens, when you have Darnell Washington who can become an extra left tackle in this wide open space that, that's left over here, I mean, it's just a cheat code for Georgia. How many times have you seen just a tight end that gets beat by a decent edge rusher on that blind side there? And Darnell hardly ever does. Yeah, it's rare, for the, especially for their, their two tight ends. Next up. This one is – I've been waiting for this one. So, obviously, they play Tennessee. And then the next week against Miss State, they come out and, all right, we're going we're gonna to run Tennessee's formation. We're going to use it. But they did it, I think, a couple times. They've tried sort of the quick screen out of it. Other times, they've just ran the ball out of it. Here, you find Bowers, like, first two steps comes down at the – towards the corner, like he's going to block for a screen-type play, then works to the middle field. And one of the things that we do at PFF is measure ball placement. This is what's known as accurate plus. Right there in the frame, go get yak. Kind of hard to see how they're lined up based on the the camera angle here, but I'm glad you explained it that way. It's almost in the same spot on the field that the Oregon (laughs) play, that that they got like 30 yards against Oregon uh, against, but it was good to see them stretch the edge here. A.D. Mitchell, like, I love the hit. Great hit, not great block, because Perkins is able to come off, come off you and make the play. I thought, by the way, watching this live, I thought, oh, crap. Darnell got his knees, like, kneecapped. And mm-hmm. you got he got a shoulder to the kneecap, helmet to the kneecap, and I was like, crap. But then he gets up, and he's fine. And then you see the replay, and you realize where he got hit, and you understand why he's a little upset. Well, and that was the flag to the block below the waist, yep. to which I don't even like blame the LSU guy. I think every block on Dornell Washington's below the waist. Just, there's, just there's a, I think one of the other plays in, that we're going to have is kind of the same, just because he's that that big. But, you know, what we so play action, play action. Now it's just so it was Ladd, then it was Bowers. Now it's Kenny Mack, like getting your guys in space. And then they stalled a little bit. And then we get third and goal. I think this was third and goal. One personnel thing, Asian in here. I was surprised to see it based on some goal line struggles, uh, but it turns out to their favor on this play. It, to me, that was probably the key that they weren't running it, but that and the fact that he's running away. Yes, and it's a great diversion. It's a great – I like the additional – just to give a quick eyes to the defense to look right and hesitate a little bit right when you know you're coming back to their left. Did you see their step? I mean, they're because they're all four, of moving in unison. Yeah. Yep. A little, just a little like hitch dance move kind of thing. But this is just great ball placement because if you miss inside, it's house call the other way. And one of the things I've never understood with defenders, like 15 here, that gets the safety that gets beat by Bowers. Once you know you're trailing on this play. I don't understand why defenders don't jump it right there. Like once he knows, oh, he's got me, he's got me leverage, he's got me beat. I don't know why they don't just jump sort of forward, more towards Stetson in this way, make him put it over his head in some way, even though you know you're not going to chase the catch the uh, catch the defender. Just make it a tougher throw somehow. But he didn't, and Stetson again on the run, 
on the money, accurate plus throw, touchdown. Easy touchdown, I will say, from the football I've seen. I think this is kind of that hybrid, not a pick, but kind of a pick that Roseman is oh, yeah. supposed to throw here. It doesn't do that good of a job of it. It's, it's always so tough. You can't be too aggressive. And they look like, almost look like he tripped a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, you can't be – like if you get your arms up in any way, you know, they're throwing it. If yeah. Almost contact anymore, they're throwing it. But that little bit of hesitation, that little bit of clearance, touchdown. Yeah. Just really good from from Stetson Bennett. And again, look, one reason this is possible is because you have an extra tackle here in Darnell Washington who just makes things so much easier. I mean, Stetson has all the time in the world. Not pressured at all. All he has to do is look at the space. Six of 30 dropbacks he was pressured, and one of which he made a phenomenal throw that we're going to show here in a little bit. Yep. This, this was after the pick, and I'm sitting there – I I won. I would have bet a paycheck that this ball was getting thrown in the end zone, it, or at least tried to be thrown in the end zone. Because that's just OCs. You know, they, you're licking your chops. You got the ball in the 20 yard line right here after a turnover. All right, let's just go. Much like they did against Tennessee, right? First play uh, after turnover or the short punt, or whatever it was. But oh, um, the short punt. I think right after Jalen Carter made the play against Tennessee, then Lad. Double move, touchdown. But this is just a great throw because you this throw can't be put anywhere else because you got to get it over top of three. Who's playing? Who's playing the seam? Kind of a cover three seam a little bit, running with it, and then in front of twenty four. Great throw in rhythm throw. Just and we've seen this too much. The great route from McConkey. Yes. The thing that wasn't seen on this play, and it didn't need to be necessarily, I believe this is probably some pass <laughs> interference up with this away. At least holding, right? At least defensive. Holding. Well, but watch it through. Watch it through. Yeah. This, <laughs> Without, then it's just mad. But I mean, by that point, it's a touchdown. So, yes. Who cares? But love the play. Love the aggressive call. Good job chipping by Milton. I mean, LSU was pretty aggressive toward the line of scrimmage, leaving a ton of space early on in the game, just down here awaiting these medium to long throws over the middle. Well, and it's so that the medium to long throws over the middle, I think this was the only, it was one of two thro throws that he had over 20 yards uh, in the air. This was like right at 20, it was like 22 or something like that. But, he absolutely murdered them in the middle of the, in the intermediate routes between 10 and 19 yards. He was nine of 10 for 145 yards in a touchdown. And then this touch, this, you throw this one in as well, you know, so you're 10 of a uh, 10 of 11 with two touchdowns and about a hundred, you know, 167 yards on throws that are in this sort of 10 to 20 yard range. The other one was when he got pressured and he, he kind of th just threw it deep as a, almost as a throwaway in a way. He just, he killed them in that area of the field. And, and Ohio State's going to do that too as we look forward to the to the next game because we the cool part is, is that we get to do that. Let me give a shout out to Kendall Milton here as well because I've given him some grief on these film don't lies. Um, this is really good blocking, mm -hmm. making sure you're not going to get a hold and then you kind of go out for you know a check down if you have to. Yep, and it's, and it's on Perkins. Milton should be good at that. He's a big guy. Great play, great ball. This I th this probably was my favorite play of the game, and for for a reason because what do we normally see th with this route? We oftentimes that's Rosemary Jackson. It's hard to see on the TV copy, but this this is Rosemary Jackson. He's at the top of the screen. He's hauling booty deep, and especially in this type of coverage, what happens nine times out of ten is the corner and then the safety who's standing right at the orange line they run with him. Like that's Arian Smith clearing out. That's, you know, they'll run the leak play off of this. They'll, you know, they'll do various things off of this, but use the defense's sort of conservative nature against them. Rose, he's boom, boom, boom. And then all of a sudden stops on a dime and works back. And this is what I would love to see them do more of with Arian Smith. 
is use his threat of speed against the defense because Stetson can make this throw as good as anyone in the country where it's you know that 15 to 20 yard comeback range and where he just boom stops on a dime and starts working back defenses are going to bail love this play absolutely love this play only three options to pass two here right because you have the tight end staying in so it's the two receivers and then a back checking down on the left that's it and yeah McConkey deep going he kind of even goes deep as well helps even further clear that out like it use defense use what defenses are taught against them always um I'm glad you mentioned McConkey because his route here and you can't see the full thing but I want you to see how his path and just being I get his size he's a physical player and I just want you to see how he takes out one and two guys here to get them off of their beats. One, two. Wins at the line of scrimmage. And I, I actually, I, I thought Ladd would have a, a big game, potentially have a big game in this game because LSU, and we talked about this in the preview of the game, LSU's corners, 6'1", 6'2", 200, 205 pounds, big physical corners. He's, he's going to outquick all of them, and he did. But because of that move, Stetson is now surveying the field and he has an LSU defensive back looking the wrong way. Like, <laughs> back completely turned to understand what's supposed to happen because of McConkey's effort off the line. Like, that's elite stuff there. He's so good. Sorry, More of I, this. I want to More of this. I love I it. Just fawn over McConkey forever. One of the six times he was pressured. This is one of those. I, I think I know what happened with this play. I think he watched Caleb Williams play on Friday night. And, you know, do some of this kind of deal. And he's like, I can do that too. I'll show him. Great strong hands from, from Blaylock. But I'm going to throw in the run across my body like that and still get that ball there with the needed velocity. Because it's not like that coverage was – it's not like he's wide open. But it's in an accurate spot too. I mean, he throws it to, to where from the, the space is available. Yeah, if he puts us on the inside, that's in trouble. I will say when oftentimes when he's doing stuff like this is when you know he's completely dialed in. He's just having fun and just balling. He pretty Phenomenal. much said as much. <laughs> so just before the half here. I, Darnell. Give, give me this all day. This is one of those ones where as a as a fan, you're probably like, why where has this been for three years? This exact play? Oftentimes, by the way, they they trail him and cover him better. LSU played terribly from a coverage perspective on this play. Not and a lot, and sometimes I think it's it's because the anticipation that they're not necessarily going to use him. But it makes me smile from ear to ear every time this guy catches the ball in the end zone, even on the two point play, because what he does for this team, like that, should be rewarded with some touches in the fun space and, and some celebrations. His head's this tall. <laughs> He's kind of got some bent legs too. The the padding of the post is there. I noticed this when I saw him in person in Starkville. I was like, yep, he's, he's taller than the padding on the goalpost. They don't normally design these things for people like him to be down here. And it doesn't matter. I was more impressed with, and I tweeted this out too, the LSU band back here did not flinch. And I'm like, How? I, I get your Louisiana, and I get you see a lot of crazy things down there close to NOLA territory. But, like, man. With that big of a human coming at you? I mean, I would cower and feel. Look at him. They're just – I think he had one. Maybe the arm came in a little tighter, but the rest of them, like, nah, we good. All right, y'all. This is what – like, Bowers and Washington, this is your – these are your unicorns. Folks don't have matchups for these two guys, those two guys. And as long as you use them and make sure they are part of the plan and you know, Bowers caught all six of his targets in this game, this was Washington's one target other than the two-point play, like, all day. It's just all day there. We're encouraging everyone to really just like stop and smell the roses on this Georgia team. And, and the two primary examples, Jalen Carter's in there, if you don't get me wrong, 
you're not going to have Stetson Bennett next season, and you're not going to have Darnell Washington next season. And you don't have an adequate replacement for either of those at the moment, in, in my opinion. And there is no replacing a Darnell Washington because no one has that in the country. No. Bowers is there. He's going to do a great job. But Bowers' job gets immediately harder when Darnell Washington is not on the field too. Great subtle little little ball fake from Stetson just to clear the safety out just, a, just that little bit more. And no overthrow, by the way. How often have we kind of seen this where the coverage has been a little tight or it's, there's been a window and he's kind of missed him. Perfect. And that's what he was all game. He was dialed in. This is, this is the one time that I actually got a little loud just instinctively in the press box when I know you're not, you know, you're not supposed to do that. But I, as soon as I saw it, they have not run this play. And trust me, I know. Or this is uh, if I'm and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I, I don't think so. I was like 99.9 percent sure. Jet fake, play action, pull, and hit the hit Bowers in the middle at a, as an inline tight end. This is the one he took 75 yards against South Carolina, and I don't think they've run it since until that play right there. Interesting on personnel that obviously this is a McConkey jet sweep fake. He's not there because he's injured at this point. Don Blaylock. Getting yep. that, I, I would have thought that would have been Kyrus Jackson, but Don Blaylock being in that spot, good for him. Well, I think in the in the South Carolina game, it was even Dajan, maybe. Yeah, I think, I think was, you're right. Was who it was, but eye candy. It's eye candy because what do you look at? Twenty three. Twenty three is the one. That, the linebacker to the offense is right. The de- defense is left. Like he's got jet fake. He's got ball fake. He's got a big human in Willock coming over, all that eye candy and all that traffic right in front of him. Bowers is going to easily be – he just turns around and starts running backwards for some reason. But it just – it takes him completely out of play. Like, Bowers has the ball and catching it on the ground before he realizes the ball is even – you know, he's turning the head and figuring out – trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> Ball's here and 23, looking in the wrong direction. <laughs> I, I just I, – I want to see more of, much like I told you, I want to see more of the use the defense rules against them, by, especially with deep balls and comebacks. Use the eye candy like this. I don't think they use jet fakes enough. They could do it more. This is tight coverage. This is a really good throw. This is this is a pro throw. Yep. He made – so let's, let's think about this over, over the season. I, I tweeted this out earlier, but – Basically, the five games that, that Georgia played against teams that finished ranked in the top 25 uh, in the college football playoffs. So we got Tennessee, Oregon, LSU, South Carolina, Miss State, Stetson Bennett, 91 overall grade, 90.5 passing grade, right at 300 yards a game, 17 touchdowns, two picks, almost 80% completion. Big game, Bennett, whatever you want to say. Like, you know, we saw it a year ago. Does he got two more in him? I tend to think so. We'll all find out together. Uh, again, as, as of recording, we don't know who's invited to the Heisman. I suspect by the time you see this, you'll find out that Stetson Bennett is in that group and he'll get a lot of love on the national stage. And then uh, three weeks away from playing back in Atlanta, a place that he says he loves to play, tends to play well there. All He deserves to be that. there. I think he deserves to be there. That's the yeah. thing. Hey, um, thanks for watching. Film Don't Lie here from UGASports.com. Thanks to Jittery Joes for uh, sponsoring us, supporting us. Make sure you support them. JitteryJoes.com is how you can do that or any of their Athens area stores. For Brent Rollins, I'm Dane Young. We'll see you next time.